Hello, David Zeritsky for The Bond Experience. Welcome back. Oh my gosh, I have such a treat today. You know that we do these Bond community discussions. It's really where we get to know and interview a lot of people from the Bond community. And let's face it, the Bond community is global. I am here today with the James Bond Complex. You may know them better as Edgar and Mathieu. Good evening, gents. Good evening, David. Good afternoon. Hey, oh, hey. How's it going? <laughs> yeah, please introduce yourselves, too, because you don't know each other at all. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Uh, bonsoir, mon ami. Comment allez-vous? Oh, merci, Monsieur Zeritsky. Oh. Très bien, Mon ami merci. David, et vous? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Un petit. Un petit. Oh. Very, very little bit of French, but I had to throw that out. Very all right, good, gents, very. we, we got to start at the beginning. Now, I, I'm going to gush a little bit. And then I'm going to just not gush as much. So you're going to be embarrassed for a moment. But um, you guys, I've told many people, are definitely have become my new favorite Guilty Pleasure Bond podcast. And we're going to talk about how long you've been on the air. But I did find you relatively recently, meaning this year, um, and, and quite frankly, couldn't get enough. I was very um, excited and anxious when you would come out with something. Uh, a lot of it has to do with you guys have a dynamic interaction between the two of you. You really do. I mean, your your personalities connect, the synergy, you're funny. You two have very different personalities. You're not the same individual constantly agreeing with each other. Um, and, and there's so much to love. But for those people who are watching this that are uninitiated, poor saps, tell us a little bit about the James Bond complex. What is it? Well. Where do we begin? Uh, it's, a, it's a weekly show. Uh, it's been going on. We've been recording. We've recorded in late 2017, but the official launch was February. February 7, 2018. 18, yeah. February 007. Uh, obviously done on purpose. And it, it's like, essentially what we do is we record the, the trick is you don't actually record every week you select one day per month and you do a batch of episodes yes. so we have our lineup set here's the book here's the movie here's the bonus here's the debriefing and we do that during the entire day and then we sort of trade off well you want to edit that one i'll edit this one basically the as our motto says the james bond phenomenon in all its shapes and forms from fleming to films and everything in between Ooh. oh oh that's right. So yeah, so we started with Fleming. You got to go back to the source, the origin, and for a while, while we still had Fleming books to talk about, we would basically do this Casino Royale the book, and then Casino Royale the film, and let's talk about our favorite soundtracks, something like that. Right. Uh, now we're getting a little bit creative because we've done we've done the Flemings, we did a Fleming debriefing, Diff Connery nice debriefing, to, Connery debriefing. It's like we have to get creative. So, but so basically, we, we do want to tackle as much as possible in the world of James Bond, whether print or or visual. So, so Mathieu, when how did you guys meet? I mean, obviously, no agent put you guys together. There had to be a, a coming between the two of you. That, that's an interesting story. That yeah. all started in the summer of uh, 2017. Uh, I I was actually I was not in a right a good place when I met Edgar. I just broken up with a girlfriend of mine, and, and there were two opportunities where I, what I was going to do with my vacation time that was coming up. Either I was going to Cuba, or there was this event in Quebec City where they were um, showing Casino, not Casino, what I'm saying, on a Majesty Secret Service. George was Lazen was there. Oh, initially. I tried to go to Cuba, I'm not gonna lie, but there was a it was hurricane season, so all my trip got canceled. So I'm like, back up and I'm going to Quebec City. And before I had, I think a week or some change, I ordered the uh, poster of uh, Majesties to get it signed. So I'm like, I'm just gonna be like purchasing to sign. I'll carry cash. It, sometimes they charge for that. So I well, I was in queue after we watched the uh, Becoming a Bond uh, doc mock documentary. Yeah. I was in. I was in queue and with, this guy was next to me and uh, so was uh, Jason or, or third course. We're all in line next to each other and we started chatting and I discovered this guy actually lived like not that far from me, but still far enough that I, it, it, it's, it's in it's, it's, uh, He lives on the, what's called Nun Island. It's off Montreal. So it's a bit complicated to get here. Uh, but 
yeah, it is with <laughs> constriction. Shall I'm tell I, I can't tell you how horrible constriction makes traveling to Montreal right now. But <laughs> we need jetpacks for that. Yeah, we use jetpacks for that, fortunately. <laughs> so that's how we met. That's how we met, and a couple of weeks after, I get I got back in touch with him and was like, you know, we should do something. And I've right. always had an inkling to do podcasts. I did one before. Uh, long rest in peace, uh, my other podcast. Uh, but I, I got in touch. I'm like, we, we, we have something. And we discussed what we were going to do if we were doing a podcast. And we landed on this idea of starting with a book, then the movie, and then yeah. something. And that's how it began, basically. Did you, did you initially, I mean, when you first started a podcast, what most people think about is, all right, I'm going to do it for myself first. Right. I mean, I want to create something. I want to create a voice. But did you think about who's going to hear this? Was that ever a thought? It was in so far. I remember some of our the early day conversations were about, well, we live in the province of Quebec, which is a unilingual francophone province. But we're in Montreal, which is pretty anglophone. What language is this going to be in? So there were there were certain conversations about well, who, what's our market, our market? You know, who's our audience? How are we going to market this thing? Uh, funnily enough, since then, we've actually done a French version of the show, although it's a little bit more infrequent. Um, I guess to answer your question, I guess a little bit, we wanted to see, well, how's it going to work just with us? Yeah, but I, I don't, I, I, I still remember Edgar telling me, you know, I, I love doing this show and there could be one person or a thousand people, like as long as I'm having fun. I, I really don't care about what, what our ratings are. But now that we have millions. Oh, now we have. It's like, <laughs> I want the ratings. You have people everywhere. Everywhere. Thank you. <laughs> By the way, I was filming, uh, I have to tell you, I was filming a vlog this morning and uh, I quoted you, but now every time I quote you guys doing that, I say patent pending James Bond complex. So I already <laughs> put the patent in there for you every time I say it. I hope it works. Just much obliged, much obliged. To you. <laughs> well, I mean, and that's the right way to do it. I mean, because I, I think everybody that creates some sort of voice on social media, they really should start with the fact that they're passionate about it. And then if anybody hears them, that's just a wonderful side effect. But people are hearing you. I mean, you know, even when I was in London and talking about things, people were kind of naming their top five, you know, favorite podcasts. And you guys were very often amongst them. So oh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask a question. Where was it? Because there's always a time where you suddenly said, oh, shit, like there's actually a world out there that may be listening to us. Maybe somebody recognized you or somebody from, you know, Zimbabwe suddenly reached out to you. Where, what was that moment where you said, my gosh, we are global? Hmm, that's a really good question, actually. I don't know if we'll have the same answer. For me, it was probably when Phil Pujalia, who's a a writer or on and off writer, I believe, for the MI6 Confidential magazine approached us more or less this time last year, which would mean we're five or six months into this thing at that point. And he approaches us on Twitter saying, I really like the show. I contribute to the MI6 Confidential magazine and I'd like to talk about some of the articles. That That's what became the, the fourth Dalton Episode. Yes, yeah, that's what became the fourth thousand episode. So that's when I realized, oh, geez. So a, there's someone, anybody reaching out to us. B, it's someone that actually has written for a, let's call it a serious publication in the yeah. James Bond fan community. That's where it hit me. I don't know about maybe you, Matthew. You know, uh, it's something. It, it's, it's something completely different. Uh, on Anchor FM, you can actually send messages through the app. I don't know how it works. And there, early on, I think it's on Moonraker, we had this lady, I don't remember her name, but she sent us a message and she was like, oh, I really like your passion and really, and she said, like, I like Roger Moore and she, 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 she just loved the show. And I was like, she, she's, it's obviously, she, she said, she said it herself, she, she was from England. I was like, wow, that's, that's, that's fantastic. That was pretty cool. Oh yeah, God. that was, that was pretty cool. So that's my, uh, wow. Stuff. Yeah, it was totally. funny. I have to tell you, the um, one of the um, moments in London when we, we had a large group of people and we were talking about it, there was one guy who couldn't remember the name of your show, but he said, there's one host who's got like a really 
throaty, almost whispery voice. And the other one has this like very French accent. And I'm like, oh, that's the James Bond complex. You just described, that's their new tagline. Throaty yeah. voice, French accent. Oh, it works. Oh, I like the one uh, you said when you started, you couldn't get enough. We use the, we, if we can borrow that one. Once you start listening, you can't get enough. Craig, we're well, happy to you, my, my commutes, it, it probably drives everybody crazy. I, I have not heard a uh, song on a radio in probably a few years because it's all turned into, somebody's always posting some interesting Bond podcast. So that's, uh, that's kind of my addiction, if you will. That's a great one to have. We love, we like producing ours. We also like watching your videos and listen to the other podcasts. It's a, it's, it's a fun habit. It's a fun addiction. It's, it's fun. I, you know, Joe Darlington, which I, I know you guys know of being James Bond said that there's kind of a renaissance going on of, of the Bond community and we're enjoying it. By the way, speaking of enjoying, I want to go on note because we talked about this before the camera started rolling. Um, I am drinking vodka tonight. These gentlemen are abstaining for now. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I hear there's, there's a bottle of whiskey that's identity. there is confirm uh, we, we we will allow ourselves to confirm that confidential information yes okay so maybe it's a treat once once this ends and they get rid of me no doubt <laughs> all right it, it, as a celebration for having been on the Bond exactly. experience exactly exactly so Matera we're going to start with you with this question and it's a two-part question and it could be a little controversial so feel free to go deep into your emotions okay. tell me the greatest thing about the Bond community and this Bond hobby, but also tell me the thing that bothers you the most. And Edgar, get ready, because you're going next. Wow. Uh, the greatest thing, honestly, I, our trip to New York, you probably heard from it, uh, from, from either Joe or, or, or Matt, uh, was so much fun when we met both of these guys. Uh, drinking with, with Joe was so funny. We. <laughs> We share yes. similar thoughts on, on the recent uh, Star Wars pictures. Uh, it, it was great just being in an actual location, a boat location of, uh, of James Bond. It's just this, this spirit of community. And, you know, I always say to people, you know, if you show up to Montreal, I'll be your care and me. I'll walk you around. I'll show you the city as a local. And Matt Spazer just walked through Central Park and he was like, this building and this building and yeah. telling all this story. And I was like, oh, this is so, it's better than a guy. It's, it's, it's a bond buddy. It's, <laughs> it's, it's that sense of community. And honestly, negative wise, there's very, very little I can say. Yeah. Honestly, it's been mostly positive that I can't think of anything or any interaction that I've had. The only thing I could maybe complain is some of the comments on YouTube, but I think that's, a, <laughs> that's a thing for everyone. Sometimes I'm like, Hey, but I, I get it. It's YouTube, but that's the only negative because everything else is a hundred percent positive. I have mm -hmm. not met anyone that I didn't like, and I all the interactions have been positive so far. Yeah. Well, that's that's not a bad negative because I mean, let's face it. On YouTube, if you have any presence at all, I don't care if five people are following you, you're going to get negative ones. You're going to get trolls, especially with all the controversy going around Bond right now. You say anything, they're going to hammer you for it one way or the other. So that's not too bad. Not too bad. All right, Edgar, you're up. Well, I would say probably tangentially related to your answer is the level headedness in the Bond fan community as far as our interactions and my personal interactions. I've if yet, obviously, the obvious examples of Joe Darlington and Matt Spacer and, and, and now yourself, but, you know, I've never met a Bond fan that had a um, very strange, draconian, close-minded uh, ideas about, um, about, about James Bond and where maybe the direction the series should take. So I've always been quite impressed. Maybe I'm just lucky, but I've always been quite impressed and relieved <laughs> with, oh, like... They're normal people. They're not too obsessive. Um, my goodness, as for a negative, I, I, I'm, I want to give an answer because it's fun to say there are no negatives. Yeah, that's an awesome answer. Uh, maybe we got a little bit too angsty at times during the on and off again production of uh, No Time to Die. I almost said, I Bump almost 25. said, yeah, I almost said, yeah. uh, No Time to Die. You know, and, and I, I, I was culpable at times as well. Uh, we've did a couple of debriefings yes. where I was maybe not in the in, in the brightest of spirits. 
So I'm, I'm certainly not ex exempt from that behavior sometimes. But at the end of the day, these people have been making these movies for so long, they do know what they're doing at the end of the line. Yeah. And I think we still, myself as well, once or twice went like, what the W T? What are they doing? Clearly, they don't know what they're doing, right? <laughs> no, of course they know what they're doing. So maybe we get a little bit too angsty sometimes. But that's a good one, and I, I would agree. I think uh, there. First of all, I think that we tend to, as a community, we're starving for information. So when someone like Page Six or even Variety, which has a better reputation, posts something, we go immediately. It's the truth, mm -hmm. as opposed to look into it. I mean, genoma of a woman. You know, when Marcos, you know, from uh, James Bond Brazil broke that, everybody was freaking out. I mean, they were going and doing YouTubes and saying, how dare they? And put a woman in the title. And I'm just like, you guys know that's never going to be the title, right? It's, I don't care what Italian leak there was. It's just there, there's not going to be the title. But so it does dovetail into the next question. And we've got to talk about it because there has been months and months of discussion and rumor that this may be not your father's James Bond. And there's a lot of interpretation of that. It could be that they're looking to do some things different. It could be that, you know, they start to whittle away at what we know James Bond to be. So, Edgar, we're going to start with you on this one. What, what makes you nervous about what could change with James Bond? Hmm. I think what could possibly make me nervous is... And this might sound a little controversial, but the attempt to maybe make him a little bit too PC, which is because that's related to conversations we've had yeah. in the past. You're a big fan of Bond smoking. I understand why he smoked for a while. I certainly understand why he smoked in the Fleming books. I don't really care that much that he doesn't smoke anymore. It's sort of understood that smoking is a niche niche. Um, but how PC do you want to go and which is an extraordinarily fine line yeah what is 2 pc what is pc in 2019 or 2020 when the next movie comes out so it, it's a bit of a wishy-washy answer in so far as i don't know where the envelope starts and ends but yeah my fear would be that we embellish the attempt to update them a little bit too much to the point where i'm not sure this is james bond the cat the character anymore he's we were recording earlier today and you use the bat we're both big batman fans and you use the batman analogy he's not the hero we 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 no, he's no, the hero we, deserve. we deserve exactly like yeah he, he's an a-hole but that's kind of what makes him fun that's what makes him fun you know yeah. i don't i'm not going to behave like james bond but it's right. awesome seeing him be the hero so my worry is a little bit too pc sometimes that's great but you I'm, I'm, I'm going to repeat the same thing because that's something we're both in agreement. If you make Bond PC, you you kind of break the character. I mean, yeah. I, I always say that. I mean, if I think it's it comes from uh, the current generation that have been raised on video games. That's where you can customize your character to like the the, the, the hairstyle, the nose can be like this long. And they kind of make themselves into the video game character. And I think people tr want to project themselves uh, in James Bond so much that, yeah. you know, if he's if he smokes too much, if he drinks too much, if you, you know, that that drink, my fear is that drink that he's offered in Spectre, he's actually going to swallow it in, in Bond 25. I mean, no, no time to die. Like he's going to be start, starting to drink power drinks or not, not power drinks but those green all right yeah, 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 yeah. i think that he we don't do alcohol here here sure here's a lactose something whatever yeah whatever. digestive what? enzyme drink or something. <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> that would be my fear like he starts uh, drinking like but i don't think they're gonna go that way i think they know the character it's it's something that edgar, edgar actually told me that he asked one of his um his friends at work is 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 it the 007 franchise or the james bond franchise oh. do you so, I mean, it's a character. The character is James Bond. It's not something you can pass around. It's not, I mean, I've said it on the podcast every time that they, they try to do those, because I think that's what we're going to see in uh, No Time to Die, like a sort of a passing of the torch that reverts back to, to James Bond. They've done that in comic books, in Spider-Man, Batman, and it usually is a storyline where it, it's, 
sort of reinvigorates. I mean, reinvigorates. Re <laughs> yeah. Sorry, the accents uh, uh, putting in there. Uh, That's part of your brand. Yeah. Yeah. Reputation. <laughs> <man>. Keep it up. <laughs> It, it reinvigorates the, the character. Like yeah. when Batman comes back, he's, he's better than ever. So I think that at the end of the day, when Bond 25, AKA No Time to Die, it's, <laughs> I, I think they're just going to re reinvigorate their brand. And I was saying to Edgar, and I don't know if anyone picked up on that, you know that the hashtag Time's Up? I yeah. feel like it's No Time to Die as a, I, I'm theorizing it might be wow. sort of a review. <laughs> I, I was, I know I'm not, I'm not under your I'm, I'm theorizing that this, this is fan speculation theory at the maximum level, right. but I'm like, no time to die, time's up, maybe. And there's been lots of uh, rumors on, on that front. So I'm like, I, I, it, could, it, it could be, I'm theorizing. That'd be something actually. That, I haven't heard that theory. That's a good one. That's, that's, uh, we may have an exclusive here actually. <laughs> Oops. Don't, don't, don't say that until this is uh, live. Uh, by the way, we are we are in. I have some really good news. Um, we're in a three way agreement because the thing I've always said about Bond is make everybody around Bond keep up with the times, but don't make Bond this PC <laughs> animal. As a matter of fact, one of the things um, I said in my video with my son was um, I also don't want to see Bond a buffoon. You know, kind of the the resulting butt of many jokes because of any you know. I don't want to call the PC agenda, but, you know, movement, if you will. So don't make him, you know, trip over himself when he tries to woo a woman because this isn't they're not going to have it nowadays. Like, you know, this is a fantasy and it's just like uh, he's an antihero. He's not a hero. It's not Superman. He's not supposed to be great. I mean, I think Batman is actually it's interesting. I think Batman is more akin to James Bond than a lot of the other superheroes, gadgets, uh, you know, fallible, all those things. So the car, the car, yes, the car. All right, a guys. really psychotic drive to get the mission done. Like this man is not normal. That's right. <laughs> great, great, great villains. Great things. All right, gentlemen. So you've been you've been saying four words over and over and over again, and depending on when this comes out, um, well, this past Tuesday something happened. We we got a title. Mm -hmm. No time to die. And people have been going, uh, no, not another way to die. No way to die. I mean, mm -hmm. it's taking a little time for it to roll off the tongue. But tell me, uh, you guys can pick who goes first. What was your first immediate reaction about the title? And now that it's had some time to sit with you, how do you feel about it? I liked it. Honestly, I did, I did a little thing on Instagram. I liked it immediately. But uh, like... As a Bond fan, I, I, I made I made a joke to to Edgar earlier. Uh, first, we learned in 1997 that tomorrow never dies. Mm -hmm. Then, in 2002, you learned that you had you could die another day, but now there's no more time to die. So I'm like, I, <laughs> can you die in James Bond universe? It amused me, but right. it's a sort of a tradition. It it's, it feels like a motto that kind of like live and let die. It sounds like oh, let live and let live, and, it, and Fleming just tweaked it to live and let die. It feels uh, akin to that. So it's it's in the tradition. But yeah, they, they, they eventually need to like ban the word die or kill from <laughs> their titles because it's they're, they're they're overdoing it. That's it. They've got all they've used them all up. They, nope. I, no. Yeah, I think. And I, I, oh, oh, sorry. sorry. I'll be interested to see how it's translated in French because technically it sounds yeah. <laughs> It's uh, pot de temps pour mourir. Know, it's funny how it sounds fine in English. Then you can in, do it in, in French. It's like it's pot de temps mourir. It sounds kind of harsh. Yeah, it doesn't sound as sexy as, as in, in English. It sounds sexy. So I was terrorizing maybe uh, par un moment pour mourir or uh, it's not I, the moment to die kind of a yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know. They're probably gonna because uh, Cas Noël was Cas Noël. Quantum of Solace. They just translated at least in Quebec to just quantum. And while the, the, the other ones, they, 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 yeah, they didn't translate. They didn't translate. Well, they'll say the title and then in brackets, French version. Yeah. Like oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as for myself, going back to our debriefing uh, that'll go up in a few days, I think I was at such a point where I was getting so tired of saying Bond 25, with the exception of the Bond 25 fitness challenge. <laughs> I was getting so tired of saying Bond 25, Bond 25. I was like, thank God a title. 
oh, what is it? You know, <laughs> uh, so, you know, it's, it's okay. There's a little bit of danger, no time to die. You know, James Bond will survive little on the generic side. Um, I was talking uh, with, with actually another Montreal based Bond fan, uh, an artist, uh, he, he thought it was generic. Mm. And I agreed with him and I said, well, you know, Tomorrow Never Dies sounded generic until we found out what the tomorrow is in the film. It's the guy's yeah. newspaper. So that's kind of clever. Die Another Day sounded generic, and when it's used in the movie, it's generic. So <laughs> I'm sort of waiting to see. Uh, I'm on the fence. It doesn't sound bad. It's fine. It's a it's a very yeah. James Bond-esque title. I'm curious to see kind of like what Matthew just said, like how are they going to use it exactly in the movie? You know, whose time, what time, how you do right. die in this and that. So it could actually improve for you. Oh, sure, yeah. 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 I, 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 I think I'm, I'm probably a little bit more in uh, uh, Matero's camp of I loved it. And in fact, I loved it so much when it came out and I got so excited because nobody expected it. No, there was no preheating of it that suddenly when I saw the negative backlash, the very first thought I had was, is there something wrong with me? Like, <laughs> like just drinking everything up willy nilly and not questioning anything. But now that I've had some time and more time to more time, uh, I like it. I like it, too. All right, guys. So even though we had a title change, I did a little bit of a poll on Instagram. You know, should we change, which I'm so happy we didn't, hashtag Bond 25 Fitness Challenge, and we're not. It's keeping the same, which is great. But one of the things I loved about uh, the James Bond complex and what you two do, and I mean this sincerely, you out of many of the podcasts and vloggers out there, you open yourselves in a very personal manner. You talk about past relationships. You talk about struggles, challenges, uh, illness. You talk about a lot of things. You really do open yourself up. And it, I think it's a very brave thing to do, but it also, I think it connects uh, people emotionally, not just educationally to your podcast. So I want to ask you, how is your Bond 25 fitness challenge going? In, in different directions? <laughs> different, it's different. Uh, honestly, it's been... It's been tough. Uh, yeah, you're on a rough ride. Though. Yeah, I'm on a rough ride. Right. I just I recently changed jobs and I'm mm -hmm. still adapting to the job. And I've realized I, you know, the thing that people always complain is that they, they don't have enough time. And it's true. You never have enough time. But I realize like I need to better manage my time. I, I don't know if you noticed that the, all the thumbnails for the podcast are sort of illustration. I'm doing all of that work and it him. takes uh, yeah. me a long time. So that's something actually, I unfortunately I'll have to, to drop because it's taking so much time. Like I'm doing two more images for an upcoming show. And after that, I'm, I'm dropping it because it, it, it's really time consuming. It's time yeah. that I don't spend either exercising or uh, eat, make my my meal so i've been struggling to find time in my busy schedule to better manage it and it's something that i'm in the process of doing but that's my honestly if i get my schedule worked out i'm gonna be okay but the past couple of weeks i've been i've been putting so much overtime at job and uh I, even prepping for this podcast i barely uh, we we did a review of uh, forever in the day i finished the book uh, my notes for the book this morning uh, wow so it's 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 a challenge. I haven't given up, and I'm seeing other people that are posting. There's uh, this woman I don't remember. And she's posting, and she she lost a fantastic amount of weight. And Susanna. She, yes. Yes. She's she's great. I'm like wow, she's that's amazing. inspiring. And I see other people, and I'm like, you know what? I need to take my bike out. I need to go to bed earlier. Get do some exercise in the morning. I I need to plan my my week in advance and just stick to it that's because i've been winging it i've been i've been listen to I, you I listen to you 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 have your plan i mean you understand you you've taken the first major three steps number one talking about it out loud and yep. saying i've got to do something number two realizing that you have a prioritization and time issue then three you actually know what your plan needs to be that's a huge step don't don't do yourself a disservice with that at all Oh, you can be Susanna too. I, I can be Susanna too. You can be the male version of Susanna. Yeah, exactly. 
And Edgar, I see, I see you now. Now you obviously have been working out, uh, you know, sports and things like that, but you still seem like you've embraced it as well. Uh, I, I have. Yeah, I guess I've embraced it in, 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 in a different way for different reasons. Uh, for a couple of years ago, I, I believe it was in the summer of 2017, I wasn't in poor shape. I was just in patently average shape. I'm your average Joe. Uh, all due respect to our friend. <laughs> I didn't mean it. That was not an in-joke. That was your average Joe. I said, you know what? I'm still relatively young. Uh, there's time left. There's, there's less time than there was a few years ago. So I should try to make the most of what I got right now. Right. And so it started with some running, a little bit of trial and error. When you haven't run in a while, you injure yourself. So 2017 was interesting. 2018, I became a vegetarian. So changed the diet. And while not eating any more protein coming from meat and having to find protein from other sources, I decided, oh, let's run longer and faster. And let's let's get a gym membership. <laughs> So that's been an interesting journey. But when uh, the Bond 25 Fitness Challenge became a thing, it almost felt like an extra bit of encouragement for me because A, I love James Bond. B, I can't wait for this darn movie to finally come out, stop pushing it back. <laughs> uh, and, and B, I'm already on a journey. So it sort of coalesced into this new thing where it's, yeah, I'm, I'm still working on the diet and I'm still working on my running and, and whatever musculature I pretend to have. But now it's it's kind of focused into this super specific thing where it's like, yeah. I'm heading towards Bond 25. I'm heading towards No Time to Die, which is like a really awesome. And that's not the end. That's right. one mission. No Time to Die is one mission. Ooh, it's going to keep like on that. after that. So. That's fantastic. And it creates almost like a sense of urgency. I know it's, it's helped to galvanize people because it feels more of a uh, community thing. It's why Fitbits are so popular because you can get groups together and we've got our own crazy bond group that's doing this. That's great. That's great. And, and we thank you for promoting it. I, did you come up with that? That was your idea, wasn't it? it that's, and we thank you for that. It's a great idea. It's a wonderful idea. Uh, it was fun. That's great. It was fun. We'll keep talking about your podcast because I, when you do the podcast, I kind of open up a little bit. I love that stuff. Um, probably everybody does. But all right, guys, we're going to play a game. You ready for a game? Always right, ready for go. Me. And Edgar, you're going first. Mm -hmm. All right. The phone rings. Mm -hmm. On the other end is a very senior level executive of Eon Productions. Oh, and they say, Edgar, we love what you've been doing with the James Bond complex. You're really keeping the Canadian end up. We're going Canadian to. Canadian leaf. Any Bond experience you want. No limits. It could be to interview Daniel Craig, to be an extra in the movie. It could be to hang glide with a cigar in your mouth. It's whatever you want. <laughs> Edgar, what is that James Bond experience that you want? Hmm, that's a really interesting way to word the question. Because you ask me, what do you want as a James Bond experience? I'll be like, well, I want to see Golden Eye. I want to see Piss Gloria, which I do. But now you said it's an executive from Eon. That opens up so many more possibilities. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. I take, I'm going to bring it, I'll answer the question whilst bringing it back to our podcast. You're sure. the poster dude. I'm the episode description dude. All those little funky in-jokes and not so subtle double entendres, that, that's my dude. But your posters are awesome. Thank so, you. Um, I think... Because that person is calling me, I would, I'd like to try my hand at that conversation, that table with Neil Purvis, Robert Wade, Barbara, and Michael Please saying, great. what do we want to do in Bond 26? What kind of story? What tone? What kind of James Bond? We've got to cast somebody, too. You know, I'd like to, not necessarily cinematographer, not stunt double, but the creative process of the story and the tone and the dialogue. I, I I think that would be kind of cool. I think that's amazing. By the way, uh, Lucasfilm has uh, two individuals that are hired in their production with Kathleen Kennedy, and they're uh, basically fan experts. And all they are is to sit there all day long and go basically and connect. And, you know, how would this storyline generate? And, you know, does it connect with the fans? And, you know, what, what should we do thematically? And that's basically what you just described, but from a James Bond standpoint. 
It's my little fantasy. Although they they uh, uh, tend to know they tend to know what they're doing at Disney and Star Wars. So hats off yeah. to them. <laughs> they're, they're not they're not bad at their job, you know. So. All right, Matt, you're you're up. Ooh, James Bond experience, and I, I'm not going to use your idea. Um, <clears throat> no, I, dive scuba diving would be interesting. Parachuting would be interesting, but I, I, I'm more. I, a traveling type of guy, I would just, you know what, send me to to London for 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 a couple of months so I can like explore the city, find as much low bound location, Fleming locations, everything. Just spend a month or multiple months in London just to 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 see everything. Great city. Everything. But, but they have to unlock that door on the bridge. Yes. You, they oh, I need the door, door for it. I maybe, I've maybe. been in London and the door is locked. It's like, this doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> you can't get at it. Maybe maybe March and April of 2020, uh, spend that time in London. Mm -hmm. conversations. Been conversations. There's a plan that's uh, being... We're working on it. We're working on it, yeah. Absolutely. We're all working. We, we've got to show up, right? We've got to be there and just... Even if they don't let us into Royal Albert Hall, we've just got to like, you know, just storm the uh, the door or something. We can get in, right? We could do this. We're a big enough army at this point. <laughs> That's right. All right, guys, this is my last question, but it's potentially a big one. And it's one that I, I actually enjoy asking. It's not just a matter uh, of this vlog, but it's my own curiosity as well. I mean, the reason I had asked you for this interview is because I'm a fan, first and foremost. And the James Bond complex, they have such a, a, a rich history, even though it's been just a few years, you guys are definitely going up like a hockey stick as far as popularity. But I, you, you two come across as people that aren't exactly satiated with what's here today. So let me ask you a big question. What's the future hold for the James Bond complex? What's the future? <laughs> multiple there we have uh, multiple plans yeah there are things that we've teased at uh do we yeah you you're catching up off guard david That's uh, we're, we're, we're changing <laughs> uh essentially well to get exclusive yeah go ahead what about the missions the missions yeah, the missions the missions yeah so we're trying to technically i guess we've kind of already done it even though we, we didn't we have know this time that yeah the retractively but we have one that's a you know, the James Bond complex. The, the what's the name of our show? Gee. <laughs> the James Bond complex presents colon mission blah blah blah. One mission we're uh, in post production. Let's call it is is mission live and eat apple pie, which was our our visit to New York in May. Uh, we have photos. We have a little bit of video. Uh, we, we have some really bizarre little videos which we'll try to integrate. <laughs> we, we visited multiple locations, mostly from Live and Let Die and a bit of Diamonds Are Forever. So we were kind of made sort of a road mappy. We got a little bit of Spectre log. in there. We got a bit of You can touch it if you want to. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's a tease for you. Uh, so basically the idea of James Bond Complex Presents Mission is uh, we either we go on a trip or I guess you could say we're taking inspiration from our friend Joe Tarlington because we, did you see scuba diving earlier? Scuba diving. Yeah, we just bought scuba diving lessons. So we're going to, a, a mission is we're learning something or visiting a Bond escort, James Bond location, and either by ideally video, at I, least photography. And I haven't skied know. since the early 90s. Oh, we're so. doing it on that. Oh, no, we're doing it this Oh, way. that's cool. So, so it's a new series that we're getting off the ground. We already have one halfway in the bag with the New York trip, uh, we're approaching a scuba diving one, skiing, firing range. Oh, he's going to teach me poker. I don't know how to play poker. Nice. So, yeah. Oh, these are perfect. It is It is a little bit like being James Bond, but with your own flair on it. I love that. Yeah. And actually, Joe, I was talking to Joe the other day. He's really morphed. He's, he's doing less about the being James Bond and more about kind of trailers and movie reviews and things like that. So you guys may be able to pick up the ball a little bit. They say uh, imitation is the best form of flattery. So thank you, Joe. <laughs> yeah, thank you. That is so exciting. I cannot wait for those. When's the first one? When do you think the first one will come uh, Honestly, I, it's in my computer. He still hasn't uh, told me all the footage. The, he has footage that I don't. You'll get the pictures. Uh, I, I need the pictures, uh, but I'm aiming 
late September, mid October for for the nice. episode. Nice, that's practically it's, around the corner. Yeah, it's in my computer. I just need to edit the the, the damn thing, <laughs> but it's getting there. I have a plan, um, but I still need his footage. Infinite, nudge, nudge. Because yeah, we also went to Spicecape, so Spicecape is going to be part of the uh, the video. Nice. It's it's really uh, all in, the most inclusive we could get. I think there's a few locations we couldn't get to, but a few really bizarre ones from Levin. I'm just going to say that there's there, there's one that I've I've <laughs> I've made literally Edgar walk across New York City to get to. And it's just not that impressive, but I just, it's something <laughs> oh, I book when you're talking about. I won't give the spoiler, but I've been to them all and I know the one you're talking about. The one that's kind of not there anymore, right? Uh, are we, I, in Live and Light, the book, when he comes back from uh, Mr. Big's house, he, uh, not house, but at the, the headquarters, he, he sort of scrambles on and he parks the, 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 the car that he stole in front of a fire hydrant. I don't remember the the corner of the which street, but it's an actual corner, and there's a fire. Oh, it's a book for the thing, not a movie thing. No, it's it's a book thing. It's a book thing. Oh, we went deep. We went, went deep. deep. Like I, if you've listened to to our episode, sometimes I I go like really deep. That's I, part of the charm of the show. I, I feel sometimes like I I, I might be a, a bit on the obsessive compulsive. So when I read something that I'm like, oh, is it a real thing? Like for, for uh, forever a day, a review we did, there was a restaurant that mentioned, I'm like, oh, is this restaurant still around? Oh, no, it's closed. <laughs> uh, which often happens, but whenever there's something that's still uh, alive, existing, I'm like super excited. I'm like, oh, you wow. can still go there. So, well, gotta... if there's not a fire hydrant in that video when it comes out in October, I want my money back. <laughs> money oh, back. I remember that. <laughs> All right, guys. We... Well, listen, I know I've cut you on a recording day. You've got a ton of entertainment for the entire world. I want to thank you guys again. Um, really, you make a lot of commutes and a lot of people uh, very happy. You're, you're doing a great job. We're incredibly entertained. And by the way, I mean, I, I've told a lot of people, we may not be getting trailers all the time or, or videos from Eon or things like that, and maybe even not even titles until the last minute uh, here and there. But what we do have are people like you to really fill the void. And I just want to thank you for that. And, and thanks for being on today. Oh, appreciate it. Oh, it was an absolute pleasure. We've been fans for the longest time. I still remember the Frugal Bond episodes, which yeah. which which bear fruit, by the way. Uh, <laughs> just in case there are people that aren't, haven't subscribed to the Bond experience yet. You can go, that, that back catalog is interesting and yeah. useful. Uh, yeah, so I've been a fan for, we've both been fans for a long uh, time, so it's an, it's an honor, it's not just a pleasure, it, it's an honor to be on your show, really. Oh, well, thank you guys, thanks so much. Well, listen, I'm going to let you get back to it, Edgar, Material, thank you so much. Uh, this has been David Zeritsky for The Bond Experience, and we will see you all very soon. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond Experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're gonna get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.